with Iran. Not just the setting for 2013 Best Picture winner Argo, also a country. Now, as of this morning, it seems Iran may be tantalizingly close to a historic nuclear deal. This could be a country on the brink of change. A high-ranking Iranian official telling us just a short time ago she is quite optimistic that a deal will come in the next 24 hours. Well, let's hope that is true, because these discussions have been going on for a year and a half. They're almost tantric negotiations. <laughs> Except in this case, we're all really hoping that there is not a massive explosion at the end of it. <laughs> if this deal is successful, we will have come a long way from earlier this week when it seemed tensions between John Kerry and Iran negotiator Mohammad Javad Zarif might sink the whole thing. Kerry and um, Zarif were yelling at each other so loudly that they could be heard um, outside of the room. Now, that sounds bad. Yes, that sounds bad. Although it is actually preferable to hearing the sound of the two of them making up. Ugh. Ugh. Just low moans and the sound of what I hope is someone scooping out a cantaloupe. <laughs> the thing is, it wasn't just Kerry. The EU's Federica Mogherini supposedly also got involved in a heated dispute with Zarif, resulting in him shouting, never threaten an Iranian, although she had a very good explanation. You wouldn't expect an Iranian and an Italian uh, negotiating in a cold way. Uh, that is, I would say, part of our culture. Of course it is. We all know the three most famous stereotypes of Italian culture are that they have close family relationships, they turn international negotiations into shouting matches, and they enjoy cooking pasta for dogs. You know, Italians. So let's, let's move on. Let's move on to Greece, uh, the most recent Greek tragedy. And also, also the subject of the other major negotiation taking place in Europe this week. Greece desperately needs another bailout, and if they can't reach a deal with the Eurozone, they may be forced to abandon the Euro altogether, or, to put it another way, the so-called Grexit, a Greek exit from the Eurozone. To Grexit or not to Grexit? I love saying the word Grexit, though. That just drives me crazy. Yeah. Greece might Grexit, which is a pretty glib way to describe something potentially catastrophic that could devastate millions of lives. A cutesy name doesn't make a crisis less awful. When a doctor tells you you have anal warts, it doesn't help if he describes them as booty bumps. <laughs> oh, the main obstacle to a deal seems to be trust at this point, and the tone of some of the EU leaders has frankly not helped. What's the former Belgian leader address the Greek Prime Minister just earlier this week? You are talking about reforms. But we never see concrete proposals of reform. You have to downsize the public sector. I know it's difficult maybe for the leftists, but it has to be done. Wow. That might be the most insulting thing I've ever seen an outsider do to the Greek people, and I'm including this scene from Mamma Mia. <laughs> Someone call the UN. We have a musical genocide on our hands. And look, neither side is blameless in this dispute. Greece is in this mess because it spent money like a rapper whose accountant is Nicolas Cage. And, and as for the EU, their so-called fix helps melt down the Greek economy. They're like a doctor trying to cure a patient through a steady regime of Jaeger shots and yelling. So as of right now, Right now, it is unclear whether a deal is likely. But if it happens, Greece can take some consolation from the fact that their new finance minister, Euclid Sakalotis, would presumably be signing the agreement. And if perhaps the only act of rebellion left open to them, this is his actual signature. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that's the only reason he got the job. Look, it's pretty clear we're not going to get anything we want from these negotiations. Whose signature looks the most like a dick?